Hello, and welcome to the FRC Gazebo Robot Simulator tutorial video. Today I will be showing you how to properly take your exported robot and simulate it using NetBeans and the Gazebo plugins. If you're watching this video, we assume that you have already installed BROS, Gazebo, and the NetBeans plugins required to simulate your robot. You can find these instructions on the TeamForge for the beta. In addition, we assume that you already have a URDF file created through the SOLIDWORKS export process or that you got from a third-party provider. Let's get started. All right, let's begin with the pla proper placement of the URDF file. Once you have your URDF file, you'll need to place it in the correct location in order for it to run in Gazebo. This is normally the FRC sim models, the folder which is installed when you run the installation scripts. You'll notice that there are a couple of uh, files in here that we may use during the during this video, including the, the FRC 2008 ball, which is actually the 2014 ball. I, on the other hand, am going to place this in the docazebo folder, which is a hidden folder. In order to see this folder, you'll need to press Control H, which will update so that your screen so that you can select it. Inside of the models folder, you'll see all of the files that come pre-installed with gazebo. Today we'll be using the Packgoat 12, the 2014 FRC robot for Team 190. You'll notice that there are a couple of files in here that you do not have in your package. This includes the model.config file, the packgoat world file, and the robotmap.xml file. Let's begin with the model.config file. This is the standard configuration file for Gazebo. You'll need to make one of these in order for your robot to be capable of being seen by the simulator. In order to do this, you place the name of your URDF up here and the direct path to the URDF in relation to this package. You can also put a description if you'd like to. The next file you'll need to create is the packgoat.world file. This is an XML document that Gazebo will use to place your robot in the world when you initialize it with NetBeans. It includes a light source, which is the sun, the ground plane, and the robot itself, which, composes the mo uh, which is composed of the model and the X, Y, Z, roll, pitch, and yaw pose of the robot for its initial starting configuration. This is what the pose should be for the packgoat. You may need to tune this for a different robot if you try a different robot. The last piece is the robotmap.xml. In order to use this, you'll need to run the robotmap.jar that you downloaded from the beta test site. For me, that's in the FRC Gazebo site, or in my FRC Gazebo folder. You'll see here if I list all the elements that robotmap.jar is one of them inside this folder. To run it, run java-jar robotmap.jar. This will bring up this page, which allows you to select a URDF and includes motors, encoders, and potentiometers that you can configure so that you can run your robot using your own custom code. I've already done this for the pack goat, so we don't need to do that now. The last thing you'll need to do is reference the robot map XML document in the URDF file. If you haven't looked at your URDF file yet, this is what it looks like. It's a series of links connected together by joints, which can have their own limits on effort, velocity, and position, as well as damping and, fo and friction forces. These, this is the tag that you're going to have to add to the bottom of your file. It references the plugin and the XML robot map document that the plugin will need to connect your WPI lab code to your robot model. The next step is to write the WPI lab code that you will use to run your robot in simulation. In order to start up NetBeans, you'll go into a fresh terminal and you'll type NetBeans at the top. If it doesn't immediately load and crashes and you see all of this text in your in your terminal there's a chance that the term the program itself crashed you can fix this by just running it again it happens sometimes one thing I'd like to point out is because we'll be running in simulation as opposed to on an FRC controller you'll need to change the way that it updates the autonomous and the teleop commands inside of the periodic control you'll need to add a sleeper a sleeper thread that will cause it to slow down the process so it doesn't overrun Gazebo. In addition, you'll need to set up your uh, build properties file. So inside of your package for your FRC Gazebo or your, uh, your Java program, you'll see a build.properties folder. You'll need to add an, a robot.class, which references the main robot, that's how the program knows where to start and a simulation.world file, where you reference that .world file that you created as a part of what we were just talking about earlier. In order to run your code in the simulator, when you do all of this stuff, in order to do this, you'll need to do go into properties, and go to build and run, 
and we need to add the test code and simulation label, and the target is simulate. This will allow you to right click on your project and say test code and simulation. When you click on this, you'll see that it begins running down here, and so it starts running ROS core, and soon it'll bring up your driver sta your fake driver station and gazebo itself. You'll see here on the driver station that I already have a Logitech controller plugged in, and it's ready to do a our teleop code. So here is gazebo. You can see this is the pack goat that we were looking at the URDF file earlier. You'll see it starts a little bit off the ground, so that parameter may need to be tuned a little bit more. But we're ready to try and drive this guy around. So if you go in here and you hit play, that'll start the physics simulation. So you can see that all the links are ready to move around. You'll then come up here to enable, and then there you go. Now you can see that I'm driving the robot around using the controller joystick that I have here. Now, if you try and run and your robot doesn't seem to run around, there's a chance that you aren't giving it the right values to your motors. You may need to go and edit the robot map so that your multiplier is something other than run. One. This robot is using 10 as a multiplier. But yours may need to be higher or lower depending on your system. That's a basic overview of how to get your code running here in Gazebo. Hopefully you can use this to test your code before, even before the robot is finished being built. Happy testing!